بفاميلي اليوم معي دكتور أليكس كورتاسكي وموضوعنا هو عن الإدوكاسيون أو التربية الحديثة التربية الإلكترونية Good morning Good morning Thank I'm you very much for having me Welcome I'm going to try to translate what you are saying I'm going to be impressed <laughs> <laughs> We're talking today about the, uh, the symposium you're uh, going to do and it's about e-learning and it's uh, organized by Education School Network mm -hmm. What's Education School network. So I was invited by the Education School Network here to Beirut um, to, to give a talk about, about e-learning but more generally about the virtual world and the revolution that we're experiencing. Because Just because you are a journalist exactly. who writes about studies, uh, technology and interactive. That's right, yeah. And I've also, I've also done a PhD work. I, I did my PhD in the social psychology of interactions, mm -hmm. but specifically online, looking mm -hmm. at how and whether things are different online yeah. than offline. And okay. so they invited me to talk a little bit about that mm -hmm. and about some of the issues that seem to be arising because of this digital revolution. Mm -hmm. So the Education School Network uh, uh, works especially in the education or uh, e-education uh, well, field. That was, the, that was the specific topic of this particular symposium. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. what I was invited to do is to kind of provoke. Given that so many people now have technologies in their pockets, in their hands, in their, you know, practically plugged into their, into their spines, um, it, we were looking at, or rather I was looking specifically at, it's such a commonplace phenomenon now. What can we do next? What is the next thing that we should really be thinking about? Mm -hmm. um, what should we be aware of? And so I argue, um, and this is across all of the work that I've done, I argue that rather than looking at the technology to solve our problems, which is what we always, and we all do this, like, mm -hmm. we all do mm -hmm. this. Of course. I know, it's, it's easy. You push a button, it gives you an answer. You yeah. think, thank goodness, it's given me the answer. We don't, don't even need, we don't even need to think but anymore. Exactly. <laughs> Hurrah. Well, rather than just doing that, thinking a little bit more yeah. critically. Mm -hmm. Because now, as I say, everybody has their devices in their hands, in their ears, everywhere, right? So the digital revolution is part of our lives. It's affected us politically, it's affected us economically, socially, and closer to my heart, psychologically. Mm -hmm. So how can we be good digital citizens in use the 21st it. century? Yes, and how can we use it to our best advantage? Mm -hmm. And rather than blaming it for the social problems that mm -hmm. we're experiencing, recognizing that it's a technology that connects humans to humans mm. and think about how we need to deal with the social issues that it raises rather than saying oh well it's just the technology just mm -hmm. because it gives me the answer doesn't mean that that answer is correct but the issue uh, is was and is still that uh, they are afraid if <gasps> this is going to replace human beings. i know it's amazing and mm. that's the thing we've seen so many innovations technological innovations in our lives you know we've seen the the dawn of 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 internet technologies, but not just internet technologies, yes. video, text, Skype, you know, we've, we've seen all of these different technologies mm -hmm. that are out there that seem to have truly transformed our experiences of life. But I would argue, I, I wrote a book last year, yeah. um, or rather it was published last year, that was, that was actually looking specifically at whether our social and psychological selves have been transformed mm -hmm. by all of these technologies and whether this fear is actually justified. Mm -hmm. um, and what I did was I looked at things like privacy, I looked at identity, I looked at family, I looked at love, I looked at all of these things that are the human, characteristics, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. those things that are, that are about us. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the psychology research from before, what that kind of thing meant, right? What our motivations for, were for privacy, for mm -hmm. example. And then I looked after the introduction of the web at again, yeah, join. rather than looking at what the technology is doing, still the meaning of family, of love, of privacy, of identity, of community. And I realized that just because it's online, that hasn't actually changed. It hasn't transformed the motivations, the way we deal with it, the reason why these things are very special to us. So it's still the same. Oh, absolutely. Or yeah. maybe better. A There's little a, bit. Well, yeah, <laughs> possibly a little bit better. I mean, possibly a little bit worse. Okay. We're still trying to negotiate and figure out mm -hmm. how we do integrate this technology. And this into is our what lives. you're going to do in the symposium. Let me just translate. Yes. And then we go in the details of the symposium. Yes. 
لكن بصفتها السيدة كروتوسكي صحفية وصحفية بتحكي عن الدراسات التكنولوجية اللي عم بتصير لحي جربوا ودعت على هالسيمبوزيوم لحتى ينحكى عن هالموضوع وعن علاقة التكنولوجيا التكنولوجيا الحديثة بالإنسان هل هالشي رح يكون إيجابي هل هالشي رح يكون سلبي رح نحكي عن تفاصيل السيمبوزيوم مع دكتور كروتوسكي دكتور so the aim of the symposium is to do this relation It, the, between the people, human, and the technology. I think okay? really, truly, mm -hmm. the aim has been to start this dialogue, yes. to open up this debate, to tackle the one side, which are people with great fears, yeah. great fears yes. about what the technology is taking mm -hmm. away from us. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, the people who say, this is going to save us, this is going to revolutionize our world. Mm. And rather than just looking at the polar opposites, these two sort of extreme stances, try and integrate them and open up the dialogue so that and we can start to have these conversations about technology and about us. And is there any way to change it, to make it more healthier, to make it more real, the, the online world? Oh, there's many ways that you yeah. can do that. I and mean, this is, are you, are you going to give some advices, some ways, uh, new uh, new uh, ways to deal with it? There's a couple of different ways that you can mm. deal with it. My primary focus at the moment is just reminding people that the technology was built by human beings. Mm. And human beings are fallible. Human beings have different perspectives in life, don't they? And so the technology, you should actually think of it rather than as, than as something that is fixed in time, as something that is a cultural artifact, like art or like film. It's something that reflects the time and the desires mm -hmm. of the people who are building it. So that's the first thing, is to recognize that the technology is not magic. It is, it is part of us, it is of us. And it's made for us. And it's made, absolutely, it's made for our desires, it's made to fulfill certain needs. Mm -hmm. But the crucial thing is how are those individuals, how are those artists of technology, the designers or the engineers, what do they think is us and how are they trying to meet those needs? So I think that's one of the, that's one of the really interesting parts about moving forward and how we can integrate the technology in a, in a conscious mm -hmm. and mindful way. Mm -hmm. But I think secondarily, and this is something that I do that, uh, that's been really interesting, is, is putting limits on our technologies. So there's a couple of really exactly. good examples. Just a couple of really good examples. The first is, and I've seen this both in San Francisco and in New York. This is a fascinating phenomenon. I love it. It, it just thrills me. What people do when they go for dinner, and we all, you know, we go to the bars, we go for dancing, we go for dinner. Yeah, everybody's like this on their phones, right? That's fine, that's, that's where we're at now. Okay. But people are taking their devices out and they're sticking them in the middle of the table yeah. when everybody arrives, right? They're sticking them there. And then the first person to take their technology, because they can't stand it anymore, the first person to take it and, and look. everybody No, no, imitate. the first person to do that has to pay for the drinks or for oh. the dinner. So it's a way of basically saying we're, we're placing limits uh -huh. because we know that we like our devices and they're there just in case an emergency yeah. happens. But let's be here right now. Let's another, resist let's the resi temptation. Let's have some, let's, let's have some will uh -huh. over our devices. Okay. There's a wonderful quote. There's an absolutely beautiful quote that, a, that an author named Douglas Rushkoff said. And he said, standing up to your Blackberry is not standing up to the technology. It's standing up to your boss. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we need to remember. It's like the BlackBerry is your boss. Exactly. We yeah. need to, but it's also the boss who's trying to send you emails at mm -hmm. three o'clock in the mm -hmm. morning mm -hmm. on a Thursday when you're like, I need to sleep. I need to have time with my family. Exactly. You know, you need to say to the boss, hold on a minute. I need to have my time. I need to have my free time. Okay. So that's, those are a couple of different ways that we can, that we can resist the technology and, and integrate it more mindfully and thoughtfully into our lives. Okay. Dr. Krutaski بتقول إنه التكنولوجيا الحديثة هي خلقت من الإنسان ولا مساعدة الإنسان إجمالا أو هيدا كان المبدأ الأساسي. فالفكرة الرئيسية إنه نعرف نتصرف مع هالتكنولوجيا هي إنه نجرب نحط حدود و عطيت مثل لطيف جدا انه بامريكا عم بجربوا لما يكونوا معزومين على العشاء لحتى ما يقعدوا كل الوقت على التليفون بيحطوا التليفونات بالنص واول شخص بيمسك التليفون بينجبر هو يدفع الفاتوره وهيك بيجربوا شوي يوقفوا هال هالحدث او هالفينومين هيدا دكتور ذا توبيك ان ذا سيمبوزيوم از ايدوكيتينج فور ذا فيوتشر وذ ذا تو of the present 
And what's the main points that you gave? Primarily, the issue is that the technology is not magic. Mm. At the moment, we're treating it like fundamentalists. We're saying the technology is giving us the answers, and we're not questioning that. We're not being critical. And I think that the next step in our evolution with technology is to be more critical, is to think, where did this technology come from? Who did this technology come from? And what is it that they're trying to say yeah. with this technology? How are they trying to represent us as human beings? And is that actually actually how we think of ourselves, mm -hmm. the way that they're constructing us within the software. Yes. So that's really the main point of, of what it is that I was trying to say. And the, and the point that I, that I come to again and again is that the technology is not doing anything to us. Mm -hmm. We are doing whatever it is to one another because all the technology does, all the technology does is connect us to another person mm -hmm. or to other people. It's an amazing facilitator. Yes. And what we do with it is our responsibility. It's not the technology's responsibility. But like we said uh, in the beginning mm -hmm. that we don't think anymore and we don't have to think anymore. Yeah. And this is negative uh, That's our somehow. fault though. But that's totally our fault. Mm -hmm. Like it's not the technology that's doing anything to us. We have to say, hold on a second, I want to think. Hold on a second, I want to have a conversation with my friends face to face. Now I'm not suggesting in any way getting rid of the technology altogether because it's an amazing thing. I love technology. It's part of, it's part of who I am. It's part of what I do. You know, I check my Twitter feed. I check my Facebook feed. I send my emails. I do all of the things that everybody does and I love it and it's extended my social life and my psychological life but it's not everything mm. and so there's ways that we can think about it in a more critical and a more social way and I think that's really we have to take the responsibility. Yes, in the social uh, field it's maybe easier yeah. but when we talk education mm -hmm. uh, it's we can choose or we are choosing the easy way and the easy way is the uh, technology, yeah. is when we do the researches, when, we, oh. uh, when Google gives us all the information we need. So sometimes <laughs> we think that we don't even need to go to school. Oh my gosh, you know? we do. We do but for a couple of reasons. First of all, the social reasons, as you say, yeah. it's sort of interacting with our fellow human beings. Mm -hmm. You know, it's having that delicious, what I call meat space time. Of you know, it's that sort of the squishy human elements because the technology, of course, can't rep represent us fully and completely. It's mm -hmm. just a machine, right? That's, that's all it is. But secondarily, because what we don't get just by asking and receiving is that really crucial, critical capacity mm -hmm. to really think about where technology and where information comes from. Mm -hmm. That's essential. That's yes. absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. So how far does it have to go? Especially in schools, maybe. And we're talking he here about Lebanon. Mm -hmm. How Lebanon is responding to all this uh, modernity? It's been absolutely fascinating to be here. This is my first time in Beirut. I have wanted to come to Beirut literally for about 10 years. So finally I'm here. And it's been fascinating to speak with people in Beirut and throughout Lebanon about how they use technology and also to observe. I'm a social psychologist. That means that I get to stand at the wall at parties and watch people. This is what I've been doing. I've been sitting in cafes, I've been drinking my coffee, and I've been watching people. Everybody is mm -hmm. on their phones. I mean, that's amazing. So much more than I've seen elsewhere. Which means that the way that we're getting to our, to our information, to our internet in this country, is through our mobile phones. That's, trans that's truly transformative. I mean, it's, a, it's an extraordinary evolution because now we don't need to remember. We know where to go in order <laughs> to remember. And this is not something that is specifically Lebanese. This is not something that is specifically of this country. But is it negative or it's positive? Not, it's, not, it's not either. Mm. I mean, that's the interesting thing. There's a wonderful study done by a woman with a delightful name. Her name is Betsy Sparrow. And she describes something that's called transitive memory, right? And I'll define that. Transitive memory is when you've got, say, a group of friends and you know that Bob is always the one who remembers the birthdays mm -hmm. and Sue is always the one who knows everybody's phone numbers. And rather than remembering the birthdays yourself or the phone numbers yourself, you go to Bob and you go to Sue. Yes. Well, now we're doing this, but we're doing this with our devices, right? So it's not 
negative, we're just treating these devices more as intimates, more like Bob and Sue. So what happens when our devices disappear, our Google turns off, we're lost. Yes. We're totally lost. Now so that's we, something that's a, a future dystopian scenario. Mm -hmm. We don't need to, you know, we don't need to envisage that. But it's just simply an elaboration on the fact that these devices, the way that we're using our technologies, is like how we use our friends, how we pull information back out of our friends. So we still have, uh, or we still need both. Oh, of course. And this is what we have to think about all the time. Oh, well, we have both. Mm. We don't operate. And this is, a, this is a thing that I see a lot when people talk about the negative aspects of the web. Yes. It's like they think that as soon as you turn on the internet, that's it. All you're doing is you, are, you have put your head inside the box and you just simply operate within the internet. That's nonsense. We know that it's a box. We know that we have to sometimes put our devices down and look around us. And that's when we get lots and lots of different information. And you believe so, that everybody knows Oh, that. absolutely, of course, because we still, it's just a screen. It doesn't plug into our eyeballs. You know, it's, it's not, not the inside. Back. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not there yet. And okay. you know, then we'll yet. have this conversation, <laughs> absolutely. We'll have this conversation then when it gets to like, you know, plugging it into our spines and the whole world becomes a kind of immersive space. But still you know it's a screen and around the screen is meat space mm -hmm. around the screen are the people that we have to speak with yeah. and the newspapers that we have to read and the ideas that we don't necessarily agree with that we confront yes not necessarily through negative means but that we just simply confront okay and what so about kids Kids, kids are doing fine, mm -hmm. right? I have to say this again and again and again. The kids are doing fine. They're incredibly critical of technologies and they're completely aware of the ways in which they are affecting us socially. And that's a really wonderful and exciting thing. Mm -hmm. There's a great study by a woman named Sonia Livingstone at the, Lo at the London School of Economics. And Sonia has done a 10 year long study looking at how the web is affecting children under the age of 13, right? This is a really important, crucial age. What she says is that, first of all, children respond very quickly. They can read between the lines very quickly when it comes to the negative behaviors that happen online. And they will automatically revert to the techniques that their teachers, their friends, their and parents. their parents say to them. So if they feel unsafe online, then they will revert back to the strategies that they've learned from their teachers, their friends, and the parents. And this so is amazing. This is, thank goodness, yeah. seriously. Because if, if they didn't, then we'd, we'd be in a lot of trouble. We would have to really think about what it is that we're teaching our kids. Mm -hmm. But in fact, they do do this. And I think that we have to remember the kids are being very critical of the technologies, and they're also protecting themselves. They have literacies. They have lingos and languages mm. that we can't recognize because we're not kids. And we because we're afraid all the time. Oh, we don't we're see afraid. things what, how, like we should uh, see it. Yeah. Let me translate. Of course. So, uh, Dr. Kratoski, بتقول إنه الإنترنت مبنيت لحتى توصل الناس بين بعض وحتى لما نكون عم نعمل أبحاث على الإنترنت هالأبحاث هي عم توصلنا بالناس اللي اخترعوا أو اللي اكتشفوا أو اللي كتبوا الكتب اللي عايزينا وطبعا الإنسان هو اللي لازم يحط الحدود للتطور الحدود لتصرفاته وحتى الأطفال ما بينخاف عليهم أبدا لأن الأطفال هن عم يعرفوا لحالهم يوقفوا بمكان معين ولما عم بحسوا انه في هيك شوية خطر عم يستعملوا التقنيات اللي تعلموها بالمدرسة او مع اهلهم او مع اصحابهم لحتى يتوقفوا عند حدود معينة دكتور كرتاسكي let's talk about your book mm. so you made studies mm -hmm. and your book uh, is untangling the web what the internet is doing to you That's right. it's a psychology uh, research uh, on what did you build your analysis? So I, what I did was I took about, I think, 18 topics mm. of issues that are very close to people's hearts. And this is, again, this is about love, this is about family, this is about community, this is about hate, this is about God, this is about all of the different things that we hold to be true to ourselves. These are the social and the psychological phenomena that we think of as what it means to be human. And what I did, my personal research was looking at influence, was looking at community, and looking at trust. So I integrated some of that research to understand how we respond, what our relationships are 
online to compare with what we know about relationships offline. And that was the basis, that was the, that was the kernel, that was the nugget. Mm. What I found during my own research is that we relate to one another online in exactly the same way that we relate to one another offline. It's just mediated. It's just done via a computer. Mm -hmm. Trust still means the same thing. We still look for the same hallmarks in trust. And people are still the same. People are still, we still build communities for the exactly the same reasons, to belong, to support our ideas, to feel safe, right? That's exactly the reason why we, we've always built communities, but now we're just simply doing it in a different context. And so what I did for all of the other topics is I looked at, for example, for love. Why were we looking for love before? What did that mean to us? How was that translated mm -hmm. between ourselves? I mean, it's a lovely, delicious, fluffy phenomenon. We can't, it's very, very difficult to So define. it's a reflection about the topic, yes. first of all, and then how we are dealing uh, exactly. with it. Exactly, exactly. And again and again, for mm -hmm. almost every single aspect, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. I found is that we're still doing love, we're still doing family, we're still doing culture we just exactly have to read the way. book you just got to read the book <laughs> thank exactly. you thank for you being with much. us dr alex krotoski